So my grandma has always told me ever since I was younger that you should never hate anybody and that when you do, you should pray for them. And even if you dislike them, that doesn't mean that you should hate them. And I never really understood why this had such a negative connotation to it and what that really meant to me and how that affected the rest of society. So many people use the word hate in their daily lives and they don't really realize what effect it can have on the rest of everyone else. And I believe that this is one of the main factors of why our society is divided. So it's easier to see the effects if we go back to the beginning. Let's just say the beginning of the United States. For example, when Christopher Columbus came over to the United States, he denied that there was anybody else living here. He decided to ignore the fact that there were actual people here, as we now know them, the Native Americans. And as this has shown, the tension that, create, the tension that was created between them was ca caused conflicts and wars. And later on, the United States and the African American, the United States placed the Afri African Americans in slavery. And they did not grant them any rights until much later on. And as we can still see today, that these effects are making an impact on today's society, as discrimination still impacts today. But what does it truly mean to hate someone? Now the dictionary says that it's an intense hostility, an aversion deriving from fear, anger, or a sense of injury. But what does that mean for our daily lives? Are we really hating someone? Are we, do we really have this intense hostility towards another person? Or is it just because we're upset in that moment? Now the Department of Justice says that it's a bias against people or groups of people with specific characteristics. As we can see, this is evident in the cases with the African Americans. Now hate is often based on looks and not on who a person truly is. So I encourage you to look at the person not for what you think they might be, but for who they actually are. And this might be a part of our human nature. As an author once said, when we see someone who is different from us, there is a preferential activation of, the, of something in our brain. This causes us to get irritated the more often that we see them, and it causes us to become defensive. As a psychologist once said, it's our flight or fight response that, it, that deals with the stressors in our body. And this fight can often turn to violence. And I'm not saying that our, all of our hatred will turn to violence, but in some cases, as we've seen in past events, that hatred was the cause of a lot of violence that has happened. The psychologist also say, states that we hate because we fear, which is why I believe that our society is most divided. When we fear someone who is different than us, we, do not, we divide ourselves from them and we go away from them. We never go back to that person because we have this preconceived notion that they're someone who they are not. Now our country is surrounded by hate within the news and within movies and TV shows, but especially in the news. You see more brutality than you do peace within our nation. And I think that if we change the view of how, of how we think about hate and to whom we are thinking it to, it could make our society come closer together. Now I'm going to share this next thing with you, and I don't want this to be a political statement, but I feel that this really needs to be said. So Nancy Pelosi, who is one of our top ranked uh, females in our United States government, she went up in front of many reporters and she said that I resent you using the word hate in front of in a sentence that addresses me. I do not hate the president. I pray for him. Now there's a lot of controversy and tension that is going on in our United States government right now because of a difference of ideas. But in that moment, she chose to create peace and not divide our country even more than it already is. Now you can judge, some, you can judge someone's choices, but you can't judge a person for who they are. So I encourage you to look at a person more deeply inside of them and see who they truly are, not just who you might think they are on the outside. And I'm not asking you to make this big peace movement like Gandhi or Martin Luther King Jr. did, but I'm simply just saying to look at hate a different way. And this change might just bring all of society to close the gap that is so prevalent in today's world.